What's up? This is Mario and welcome to Awesome Audio. In this video we will talk about the frequency of sound and its relationship with musical notes. By itself, without applying the term to waves or music, frequency simply tells us how many times a cycle or an event repeats in a period of time. The hertz are the standard unit for frequency and means cycles per second. Frequency is the inverse of time, mathematically as well as conceptually. Time tells us how many seconds it takes for something to happen once, while frequency tells us how many times something happens or repeats in a single second. Therefore, this rhythm would have a frequency of 2 Hz, because it happens exactly twice in a single second. That is, it has a 0.5 second delay between each sound. Regarding musical notes, then, frequency will refer to how many times the sound wave's vibration pattern repeats in a single second, at the point in which it is measured be it directly on the musical instrument, a specific point in the ear, the vibration of a microphone's diaphragm, our eardrum, etc. These are some tones starting from low frequency to high frequency. Let's recall that a low frequency has a long wavelength and a high frequency has a short wavelength. With this concept, we can explain two phenomena, the Doppler effect and vibrato. The Doppler effect is what happens when a car is coming towards us and what we hear is... Since the speed of sound depends on the medium and not on the source that produces it, when an object moves, the waves it generates are forced closer in front of it, reducing their wavelength, and causing the wave to be perceived with a higher frequency, that is, a higher pitch. At the same time, the waves separate behind the source, extending the wavelength, and causing it to be perceived with a lower frequency, that is, a lower pitch. The name vibrato does not refer to the vibration of the wave itself, but rather the vibration of its frequency, that is, a slight and quick variation of pitch. A sine wave with vibrato would look like this, where it is seen that its frequency increases and decreases repeatedly, which causes the slight variation in pitch we perceive. The vibrato seen in the graph is exaggerated, so that the effect can be observed, since the variation would hardly be seen in a normal vibrato. A vibrato as the one seen in the image would be a vibrato of around an octave. In the video I recommended in the last episode, you can observe this effect in real life, where we can see that the variation in wavelength, and therefore its frequency, is very small. In a piano, the white keys are named C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. These notes are also known as the C major scale. Black keys do not have their own name, but rather borrow the name of the white key in front or behind it, using the symbols sharp and flat. For example, the first black key may be called C sharp, because it is the black key after C, or D flat, because it is the black key before D. Then, all black keys would have two names but musicians tend to prefer one over the other for each black key. A semitone, also known as a half-step, is the distance between a white key and a black key, or two white ones if there is no black key in between. So, going up in notes in equal semitone steps, and using only the sharp names to avoid confusion, the notes would go C, C-sharp, D, D-sharp, E, F, F-sharp, G, G-sharp, A, A-sharp, B, and C. that would be the chromatic scale. A whole tone is a distance of two semitones. Try not to mix up whole tone, which is a pitch interval, with whole note, which is a note length. You may have noticed that the note C repeats. This is because the basic group of notes, which goes from C to B, and is called an octave, repeats several times in the whole spectrum of notes utilized in music. Each octave is numbered. These same notes may also be found in a different instrument, like a guitar, only they are arranged in a different way. The piano is the best way to visualize notes. We should just consider that different instruments have different musical ranges. Each note has a previously established frequency. For example, for the A note in the fourth octave, or A4, its frequency is of 440 Hz. This means, for example, that if the note A4 is played on a guitar, 
the string will perform its vibration pattern 440 times per second, which is the same frequency with which it creates pressure variations in the air with its vibration. A slight deviation in its frequency would make us perceive the guitar as out of tune. Here's a quick example using sine waves. Actually, A4 is the note with which the frequency of the other notes is calibrated, since A notes have a frequency without decimal numbers, and of all the A notes in an 88 key piano, A4 is the one we hear better for being closer to the center of the piano. In the internet, it is easy to find a list of musical notes and their respective frequencies. An important property is that, for any note, the same note in the next octave will have double the frequency, and the same note in the previous octave will have half the frequency. So, if A4 has a frequency of 440 Hz, then A5 has a frequency of 880 Hz, and A3 has a frequency of 220 Hz. That is why when you play the same note in two different octaves, we get the maximum possible harmony between two notes, because a higher frequency is an exact multiple of the lower one. With that, we conclude this episode. In the next one, we will get very mathematical in regards to musical notes and their frequencies. In that last part about octave frequencies, we were merely scratching the surface, so you better get ready. I'd also like to take this chance to recommend that if you're interested in experimenting with generating tones of different frequencies and wavelengths, or audio editing in general, you can download Audacity, which is an audio editing software that's free and easy to use. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed it, you may hit like, leave a comment, and share to those interested. For more content like this, you may also subscribe. See you in the next video.